Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Apostle Milani. On behalf of the Rwandan Studies Program at Stanford University, I would like to welcome you all to the slightly belated start of our program. Contrary to uh, rumors, we usually start on time. I'd like to also uh, offer a special welcome to Vitada uh, Yobali. If Hamid and Christian Omobad and Vision helped launch this program some 10 years ago, Vita uh, Yobali's generosity, the passion for Persian arts has allowed us to expand the program and have events like this, have events like sponsoring plays by Professor Bezaei, who's here, and have events where we're going to have a play in five months and have a group of 35 actors who have been uh, rehearsing for three months for a play that is going to be done in four or five months from now. It will be a better play than the last play we put on, I guarantee uh, For tonight's event, I also owe a special debt to Luna Shah. Many months ago, when I was leaving for London for a talk, she said, you have to meet Afshin Nihawumi. He is a great artist. And then she added in passing, he also bears the cross for our generation. In a cloudy London morning, when I had the good fortune of meeting this and for me, it did not take me long to appreciate that he's a brilliant artist and noble human being of epic endurance, defiance, dedication to democratic ideals, and most important of all, an artist of singular talent and versatility as a painter. Last night, I also had the good fortune of meeting his wife, Tracy, herself an accomplished artist. We are very grateful for her uh, willingness to travel all the way from London to be able to stand. The Odyssey, in its canonical form, is the tale of sea toss Ulysses, stranded by wars and cyclops, by vengeful gods and jealous soldiers, yet always craving to go back to his home, his Italy. Afshin's Etika has been his art and his creativity. No travail or trouble, like daunting physical constraints born of despotism and dogma. No challenge or obstacle, rooted in the traumas of exile and fighting the wages of an often commercialized and commodified art world, have been able to dot or grunt his contagious desire to paint, and through his paintings, allow us to look anew at the allergies we thought we know. He has relentlessly fought his way to his cherished to his cherished Italy by creating a fascinating, often lyrical, sometimes jarring body of work. And we are all fortunate that he has chosen to share with us the beautiful day of his life. Great as his art is, or to use the title of one of his paintings, stunning as his elective infinities are, Reluctance as he has been to use his personal travails as a prop for self-promotion. Enjoy as we will the rich texture of his canvases. In short, rightly acclaimed as his art has become, Afshin's no less singular art is his life. We will begin our program tonight by watching a documentary about the art of his life and the life of his art. But about the life of an artist, who only, not only bears the cross for his generation's traumas, but also embodies that generation's indomitable spirit of wanting to be assertive, creative artist for a more equitable global community. Directed by Shahidar Siami, Ara Sotis has already won a few awards and has been shown in several festivals. The film will be followed by a question and answer with Afshin, who is gracefully standing here, waiting here, sitting here, and uh, I want to also thank our very capable new program manager, uh, Ms. Lomo Hapa, who makes all of this work brilliant. Thank you. So we are going to uh, see whether you want to start to ask questions or if you don't start asking questions, I'm going to serve the right and ask questions in your place and encourage you to ask. So, do you have any questions before I begin to ask? 
Yeah. Um, from what I can see in your opinions from the film, your subjects are mainly women. Why is that? Why not? There is there is thousands other subjects. So why? Well, on a general level, in, if you want to look at it, is my work is about how we react to images and how images, uh, images uh, shape our thoughts and how we connect with them. I think the, the, the particular subject lends itself really well with what I want to do. Uh, my nudes, I, I give the option to the viewer, to the audience, to connect to the painting, to the work, whichever way they want, as far as they want to go with it. If you can just see what's on the surface, the first thing that catches your eye, which is the nudity, and leave it as that. Or, which is, those nudity I'm uh, depicting in my paintings are the idea of female beauty according to the media. The images we are bombarded with every day in, in, on, on TV, in the uh, tabloids and magazines. Or you can choose and go further, have a closer look, investigate the work, and see the beauty the way I see it, with the texture, with the color com composition, with the form, in, on, on aesthetic levels. And, like, and even if you try to go even further than that, then, then that's, you start connecting with the work on a conceptual level. Two ways. Um, this wheelchair goes up and down. We saw that the film wasn't very really obvious. But some of my paintings are even you know, so big, even this wheelchair can't reach me the top of it. So I have to turn it upside down and work on it upside down. <laughs> you turn upside down with the It's one of the ways by which I try to communicate the idea I have in my head with the viewer. And there are other ways of trying my work as well. I think I'm kind of, in recent times, I'm kind of moving away a little bit from the collage part and trying to work. Um, working with more te texture and you know, color composition and the layers that I create in the work and try to cut down on the collage a little bit. Did you ever have a problem with the, like a copyright or something because you collaborate with other magazines and stuff, pictures of some other people? Did you have a problem? Mm, no, I, I never had any problem. With our magazine cutouts, so. Yeah, because here is a big uh, issue for people to use that. I never had a problem. I hope I never will. But as far as I remember, so many artists have used magazine and newspaper cutouts in their work for many years. So. Yes. Uh, usually, your work is very uh, famous. Oh, and it's a cliche, and I'm not gonna say, but you know. <laughs> Um, that the, 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 the critics said in the film is like, you know, all your paintings, is, they are like a children. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, you said uh, that you want to be seen as an artist. Mm. You don't want to be seen as an Asian or an Iranian artist. But it's very difficult to look at these paintings and not see an Iranian, Asian artist who is being impacted by this. Uh, yeah, that is true. I think art nowadays is as much global as it is local. Yeah. Um, of course, I think my work and many other artists that are not from Europe or North America, um, you can look at it as a, I, I would like to see it the way that you look at it as a global artist with a little bit of local influence. Yeah, um, 
I think thing, things are changing. With our, with our, I, we don't refer to French artists or English artists or American artists as American or French. They just call them artists. Uh, I don't see why uh, that pigeon, you know, the non-European, not non-Western artists, should be pigeonholed and sort of categorized that way. I mean, there were. Can I just elaborate a little bit further on this now? I'd say that not long ago, here we used to refer to non-Western art, like African art and Aboriginal art or Asian art, as artifacts. At the same time that the, the works of the iconic members of the modernist movement in art were influenced heavily by African aesthetics, you know, we call we call those works that they refer to them as artifacts. You know, where people like Picasso and Klee were heavily influenced by the African statues and all that. Um, that's what they we used to call them. So they are inspired by them. If someone, um, if the role was other way around, it was dismissed usually as merely a copy. You know? And I think this thing that the art is becoming more global, um, the, the, it is a change in uh, Western attitude towards the non-Western art. Uh, it's becoming, the, the boundaries are blurring more and more and more. Of course, in my work has some uh, influences from where I grew up and the culture I'm very, very familiar with. But I, I don't think you could just call it Iranian art or Middle Eastern art. Well, I prefer it not to. Yeah, I, know, I don't need to call it just Iranian <laughs> art, but my suggestion is that in order to be truly global, mm. you have to also be unmistakably local. I mean, Jasper Johns is global, but he's also unmistakably local. Yeah, I, 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 I understand. I can you know, relate to that as well. But, Choose a different theme for your next painting. For what, what would it be? Sorry? What would be the next theme for your painting if you were to choose one? If you want to choose a different one. I, I don't usually suddenly choose a theme and change the painting. What do you think it would be? Sorry? What, what do you think it would be? I, I think I, the idea of the, the subject of the images and how we connect with images and how images we influence us and especially the media images used by media it would be around still would be around that thing but um, a different subject I still work on is the subject of equality subject of war um, I try I, I enjoy working on kind of Issues that social issues well, sometimes play, and play, play with those ideas in my work. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my question. Um, I can see that um, by looking at your painting from the technique, one can say it's yours. Uh, another perspective is the concept of the painting, the political one, um, about the job and the um, how much were you conscious about the fact that um, art um, scene in London specifically is interested in uh, political issues in Middle East and women and hijab and how much um, the I mean the invest the art investors and collectors there are. are um, you mean second guessing the market? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, one one is the technique that you perfected, but um, the other thing is the concept. Were you conscious about this uh, when you were selecting the line of your? No, not at all. I think what at the time that I was thinking about the, this subject and the concept of work, what happened was my my mother came to Britain to visit me, and I remember her um, as a child when I was a kid. And she was a teacher, and I remember the way she used to dress. You know, she used to put up her makeup and, you know, very open, short skirts and that sort of thing. And when she arrived in London, for a couple of days, she couldn't take that scarf off her head. She wouldn't feel comfortable. And I felt like, you know, 30 years of institutionalization, that's what it 
can, and that was the, the, the moment that I decided that I wanted to work on the subject. Uh, were you influenced by any other artists? <coughs> Of course, there are a lot of us. I mean, when you study and research, and you know, of course, there are some artists that you, you like their work and enjoy their work, and you relate to their work more than more than more than others. And uh, consciously or subconsciously, there are some influences. There will be inevitable. That there will be in your work, of course. There are many <laughs> uh, from Picasso. To Barbara Kruger, Mona Hatoum. I noticed in your video that you, you take a lot of pictures as you're a strong industry. So, do you, um, does the idea come to you while you're taking those pictures and then you decide to do the painting, or you already know what you want to paint and then you do the work? I usually think I know what I want to do. <laughs> and of course, by the time I start half with the painting, all of that goes out of the window. Um, but I have this overall image in my head of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to com communicate this particular concept I'm working on. And um, there are always issues that happen unexpectedly. That you have to enc encounter those issues. And uh, usually the end result is very different from them. So you begin with a concept or an image? Sometimes a concept, sometimes sometimes the image. You know, it depends which one comes to my head first. <laughs> yes. Do you have any exhibition in Iran? My first ever exhibition was in Iran, 1996, in Afran Gallery. And do you need pictures there? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. And, and nothing's planned. So, we'll see. I hope. Uh, same line as question, same line of question. Does your work are influenced by a culture or subculture, uh, either social or political culture? I mean, the image and the concept. Do you get uh, uh, influenced by any of those uh, uh, cultural influence or the <coughs> political or social? Well, I, I do have my own personal political and social views on many different issues. And, of course, it, sometimes it feeds into my work as well. I'm, I'm happy to let, let it happen in my work too. And when it happens, sometimes I just like to sit down and play with paint and, you know, without any concept in my head. You said that you're not a, a nationalist person. No. And which in my view is a powerful and beautiful statement. Uh, but the question I have is, uh, how did it happen to you? I mean, were you like this from the beginning, or did it, you became like this during the process of your, your life? I have to be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I don't know when it happened or how it happened, but it just did. <laughs> Um, I mean, there are so many things in the world that divides us as people, as human beings. I uh, see nationality as the first line of that, even before religion. Uh, on, I was uh, talking about that last night with uh, Professor Nguyen. Um, even the mildest versions of nationalism, they always have that potential to spill into hate and fascism. I'm really kind of wary of that. Yes. How long does it take to paint one of your large ones? Uh, I, I know I'm just borrowing from some another artist, about 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> What's on? On your bucket list, what are some of the things you want to do um, in the next few years? 
next five, ten years. And also, how long will you be staying in the U.S.? Will you be going to other regions of the U.S.? Will you be visiting museums? What would you like to see? What are you curious about? I, professionally, I see myself, I, I'm happy to lock myself in the studio and work as much as I can. Um, as long as I can do that, I'm happy. And of course, I need uh, to um, kind of inspire myself. My, my inspiration comes from meeting people, going out, seeing different places, and trying to uh, connect and understand how people, people from different parts of the world or different parts of the even same country, how they tick and how they relate to each other, how they relate to events that happens in the world. Um, uh, regarding being here until I'm going to be here until Tuesday, um, my, I think schedule is to um, see the Stanford Museum, um, the San Francisco Asian Art Museum. Um, really would like to go and see um, Berkeley, um, and if. I can find time, I would love to go to um, San Jose um, State University and see the book. I've always been one of the things I wanted to see from the statue of the uh, two uh, African American athletes uh, from 1968. Mm -hmm. Olympics. Um, thank you very much. Do I see anything positive about the accident that you had? To be honest, I don't look at it that way. I think we all agree that all of us here sitting, we are a product of the experiences that we've had. Who we are now is, is a result of the journey we have taken in our life. And if that incident and that what happened that night had something to do with what I am today and who I am today as, as a person, as an, as, an, as an artist. I can't complain. Mm -hmm. um, do you teach also? Sorry? Do you teach? No, I've been asked a couple of times by um, the institution I did my own studies there to go and join their teaching. I don't know, team, uh, I'm considered, but I, I don't have time. I mean, I have to paint, and I know if I go down that route, I never have time to paint. So, uh -huh. so I have a question. <laughs> you can say you don't want to answer, okay. and I don't understand. Since women are so important in their painting, and there's a wonderful woman sitting there important in her life, why don't you talk a little bit about what Tracy has going to your life? Tracy. <sighs> I said that in the film as well. Can I? Can I? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I'm, I'm very um, so cautious of that because I was uh, um, having an interview over the phone with Paige uh, a while ago about this uh, creative magazine. And Paige asked me uh, about Leonard Tracy. And I started asking how I got told off. So, <laughs> and well, a love of my life, and as I said in the film, I mean, I, I can't really give any bigger praise than she is the reason that I could make me feel that I can have a normal life, that I can live life like everybody else. It, you know, 
such a great passion that made you follow it even with what happened into your life. I think that could have been enough reason for someone to stop chasing a dream. Um, I wonder now, you, you briefly mentioned that you, you're happy with staying in your studio and work. Is there a bigger vision? Is there a bigger dream that you're chasing? Or are you happy with where you are today? At the moment, I'm happy with where I am today, right now. Tomorrow, I don't know. Thank you. It's very hard for him to accomplish much more. He's an internationally acclaimed, <laughs> uh, best selling painter. What else can he do? <laughs> Except uh, conquer the uh, Picasso connection. Really, I wish. It's very uh, hard to imagine to, uh, that you have many more mountains to climb. <laughs> there, are, there are many. There are many. Uh, I don't. I just don't think about it. I just you know, enjoy the moment I'm in and I do what I need to do and what I enjoy doing most. So, uh, what happened to you is so sad and it's so sad and I don't know. Is you it? You cannot find more. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you deal with that? Are you still angry or how, how did you reconcile with all those things? I was angry, very angry at the beginning. Now I feel anger is a wasted emotion, in my opinion. No, I'm not anymore. No. But for the first couple of years, I was really, really angry, angry and very um, touchy, um, aggressive. But that's all. A long, long time ago. Mm, maybe, maybe. I, I, I can't comment uh, because when you're in, in the middle of it yourself, it's very difficult to pinpoint what it is that makes you go forward and change your thoughts and your emotions. And so, uh, I'm wondering what's uh, your favorite color is for, for you. Uh, I don't know if you have a favorite color. By the music video, did you direct that music video, the antics? No, no, no. The um, the the music video, the action song. Yes. No, no. Uh, antics. I met him in an exhibition that I uh, took part, and 
and he was kind of fond of my work and he asked if I designed the cover of his forthcoming album, which I did and we became friends and then one day he asked me, so what's your story, what happened to you while you were in the wheelchair? And I told, told him the story, I said, oh man, I have to write him something, I have to write a song about it, I said, oh, don't be silly. <laughs> so a few months later, I, a couple of weeks later, he called me, I said, do you know anybody who can um, sing Farsi? I said, yeah, I know a few people, so I put him in touch with a few people and um, the rest of it is history. So there is this woman in your music video that... I didn't direct the music video. You didn't? No. So, but I, I couldn't get the meaning of it? Um, uh, to be honest, I personally had difficulty with that. Understanding that as well okay. myself, but um, <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I think the uh, abstract expressions. <laughs> yes, uh, but but when when I spoke with her and needed her to explain to me, and I think it was her way of uh, the way she understood and connected with my work, with my paintings. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to, she depicted it in that way in the music video. Right. Which now I think about it and I'm thinking, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You could think about it in so many different ways and connect it to your art. That's why. Sorry? You, you can think about it in so many different ways. Yeah. And connect it to your art. Yeah. I just wanted to see if you kind of directed it or. No, 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 no. It's not my work at all. I think it's a very powerful music video. It is. And um, the person who directed it um, um, was a very capable director. And it's, even that uh, scene that you're talking about. Right. The more I look at it and the more I talk to, to her about it, I think it's a very powerful and, um, part of the music video. How does music affect your art? I cannot work without music. Uh, our studio always music work playing in the background, and uh, I, I can see uh, sometimes when music is off. I, um, I'm 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 not hundred percent. It feels like something's missing. And I have to. Uh, have you ch changed the music depending on what it is you're doing? You know when you have a playlist of five hundred songs and you know what's going to come next before the previous one is finished. <laughs> you know, you've been listening to the same playlist for such a long time. Too long. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think maybe one more question. Are you tired? I am. Yeah, no, no. no. <coughs> In your painting, I see different techniques that you do. And um, is the collage, is the, the magazine, that you do, um, is it, um, I mean, are you going to do other techniques also, or is it just collage right now? I, I, I think as a modern artist, you can't be too hung up on your media, yeah. not even on your uh, discipline, let alone media. I, I try to use any medium that I can that like, works better with the subject and with the feeling and with the concept that I want to communicate. and. At some point it was collage, and some other time it might be something else. And Incidentally, there are copies of the magazine for free. You can take them. The publisher was kind enough to send us uh, a few. Uh, <coughs> um, it was mentioned that in fact uh, it's beautiful to say that uh, we're not the nationalists. But for some of us who are depicted in some nationalism, can we bracket in fact? Mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I am. I am. I am. <laughs> I, I, I am an Iranian, and uh, I, I know where I come from. Uh, I grew up uh, with, with that culture. Um, how I feel about nationalism as a concept has nothing to do with that. I, I began my introduction comparing him to Ulysses. I have to end by saying Ulysses Zagaty Moshe. 